I like I heard it as, as like, oh, we like we can just prune all the money we want. And that's not what it is at all. It's about it's a way to describe what we're already doing. It's uh, we 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 spend and we don't think about taxing back for things like war. And the thing is, like, pay go is a lie. It's bullshit. And I know my opponent has supported it. But we don't need to tax a dollar back for every dollar we spend. Um, it doesn't affect us negatively. In fact, when we have a deficit in the federal government, I, I don't know why we see that as a bad thing as people, because that means there's more cash floating around in the private economy. Like it's not our problem that the federal government is spending too much and it also doesn't negatively affect them not like our prior our priority should not be the federal government's uh wallet because <laughs> they they do have the ability to coin um additional currency if it comes to that and i know people like rashida talib are talking about minting the coin which i fully support as well but the thing is we deficit spend for things like war and I mentioned that that means that we have a surplus in, in the private economy. It's not a great thing if we have a surplus in the, in the private economy, if it's only going to weapons manufacturers and defense contractors. So that's what we've been doing. And we've been fed lies by our representatives who are saying, oh, like we can't afford this and that. But have you ever noticed that they only say that whenever it comes to things that empower us? So I know I've been having a four month battle with my health insurance company. And I also realize that I'm fortunate to even have health insurance, but it's, they're, they're a real damn pain and I can't get my prescription medicine covered so that my hair doesn't fall out of my head. And that's a society that we live in and we should all be furious about it. And even more furious when we realize that the federal government can spend all they need to spend to make sure that none of us are worried about our medical bills, but they have chosen not to because we are not a priority. I, I mean, I don't try to really uh, do a lot of public, you know, explaining on it just because some people I think aren't going to shift their thinking no matter what, but I actually had Fadel uh, Kobaub on uh, on our live stream a few weeks ago and I completely understand it's, it's funding um, these programs is investing in our economy and we have the money. We make the money and uh, then we try to tax as much of it back as we can. So it's, it, that's why I support single payer because it's pragmatic and it makes sense. Uh, the only reason I would support anything else is just because I do want people who don't have it, have it as soon as possible. And I know Representative Ocasio-Cortez said the same thing. She said, if public option is our compromise, that's better than where we are now. But of course, single payer Medicare for all would be the best solution. Yeah, I've been uh, I'm endorsed by Brand New Congress, and they are um, close with MMT economists, including um, Fadel Kaboob and others. Fadel, and so yeah. I have, yeah, he's great, and I have learned about it, and it, it makes total sense to me. I think it, yeah. That's what it's I thought. Weird. I wanted to make sure because yeah. people were like, what about MMT? And I'm like, yeah. I'm getting there. I swear, I promise. Um, yeah. So are you able to, you know, when people say, how are they going to, how are you going to pay for it? Are you able to explain it to people? Do they get it? Or is it kind of complicated? Because I know at first it's kind of like, what? Everything we've been told is like total bullshit. <laughs> yeah, it is hard to understand for people. Um, for everybody. And, you know, when I first heard about it, I was like, really? It's just, it's just a, the total opposite of what we've been told for so long, my entire life. You know, we, the, the country's budget is like a household budget and you can't, you know, spend more than you take in that kind of thing. It's like, we have been spending more than we've been taking in um, ever since we came off the gold standard and probably before that as well. It's just, who have we been spending it on? You know, corporations, billionaires, and the defense industry for endless war. And when people ask me, you know, how are you going to pay for it? Um, I, you know, I do, I usually answer in a few different ways. One is like, okay, social security. One thing we need to do with that is scrap the cap. And so that, what that means is having wealthy people pay their fair share into social security, which they don't right now. Um, that's one way you can pay for it. But then let's say, then people ask, how are you going to pay for Medicare for all? I always say, well, it would save money compared to our system right now. So I always give an answer like that. And then I also combine it with an answer saying, but at the same time, yes, we're going to save money with these 
you know, different um, policies. But at the same time, um, the coronavirus bailout showed like this was a four trillion dollar bailout to corporations. Where did that money come from? You know, the Fed did a couple of keystrokes on a computer, and then the money existed. Why can they do that for corporations and not for us? And when you explain it that way, um, it does make sense to people. Um, and and yeah, so I do. I always combine when somebody asks me, well, "How are you going to pay for it?" I always say, "Well, these these programs will save money, but then also, why is it that the Fed and the government can just do a couple, you know, taps on the computer and they tr create trillions of dollars? And they can do that for rich people, but not for us." You know, they absolutely can. Um, so, yeah.